guys, it's Caitlin with the Stearns History Museum, and I'm back with another lesson about the alcohol we drink and the stories behind it. So today, we're actually gonna go way back to the middle of the 1800s and talk about a cocktail called the Sherry Cobbler. Believe it or not, once upon a time in America, Sherry was all the rage. So let's learn a little bit about it. Do you care for a scotch now? Uh, yes, they, actually, no, I'm in a Sherry mood tonight. Sherry? What an intriguing idea. <laughs> I think I could scare up a bottle of Sherry. These days, Sherry gets a bad rap. It's something your elderly aunt enjoys, perhaps, but not something you bust out on a wild Friday night. But this wasn't always the case. In the mid to late 1800s, sherry was the most popular beverage in the country. Remember, Americans were used to drinking liquor that tasted more like watered down gasoline than the smooth velvety rums and whiskeys that we enjoy today. Sherry, which had been around in Europe since the Elizabethan age, became pretty affordable stateside after 1825, when import tariffs were dropped by Spain and England. And, at the time, it tasted pretty good. And if you add a little sugar, a little fruit, and some refreshing crushed ice, you've got the most popular American cocktail at the time. The Sherry Cobbler is often credited with introducing the straw to American society. At the time, placing a strange foreign object in your mouth took some getting used to, and bartenders would often have to show their patrons how to use the straw, which would have been made of rye or reed. Because of the drink's popularity, the straw became popular too, and the rest is history. In the Charles Dickens novel, The Life and Adventures of Martin Chuzzlewit, one passage refers to the sherry cobbler. Martin took his glass with an astonished look, applied his lips to the reed, and cast up his eyes in ecstasy. He paused no more until the goblet was drained to the last drop. The sherry cobbler is actually a very simple cocktail. So, of course, the first thing you're going to need is some sherry, obviously. You also need some sugar. I have powdered sugar here, but you can also use granulated sugar. You do need some fruit um, for both the garnishes and for the mixing. And then you need something to shake it with. I have a shaker, but like you've seen in earlier videos, mason jars or whatever you have around works just as well. So what you do is you really just take your ingredients and you add them to the shaker, which you want to fill with ice cubes to start with, okay? So the first thing you're going to do is your sherry. So you want three ounces of sherry. Um, there's half an ounce in a tablespoon. So that means I got to do six tablespoons of sherry. So bear with me. Ugh, that's done. It's definitely easier to have just one of those things where you measure it, but I don't have one, so. Okay, next thing you do is you need a teaspoon of sugar. So, I'm just gonna scoop into my little baggie here and add the sugar to the shaker. Now, full disclosure, the recipe calls for orange wheels and I accidentally bought a grapefruit. But, what you wanna do is take half a wheel of an orange. I'm using a grapefruit, we'll see how it turns out. And then you just make sure the lid of the shaker is on nice and tight. You don't want anything spurting out. And you shake. Shake that lid. Whew. Hands are very cold. Okay, so one of the keys historically to the sherry cobbler is the crushed ice. In the 1840s, crushed ice was a big deal. It was hard to get, it was expensive, and so you needed that crushed ice. So once you've shaken your cobbler, you're just gonna pour it over those nice cobbles, that lovely, refreshing crushed ice. All right, keep going until you get all of it out. And you can use, you know, I've seen all kinds of different vessels for the sherry cobbler. I've seen a Collins glass, I've seen a julep cup, so whatever works. Um, then you're going to garnish it with whatever you want. Um, I have some blueberries because I love blueberries. And I'm just going to load it up here. And you can take another slice of your orange or your grapefruit, which I have, 
we're going to give it a whirl. We'll just tuck it in there like that. And of course, historically, the most important part of a sherry cobbler is the straw because it was one of the drinks that really popularized the straw in America. So pop it in and you're back in the 1840s. So, like I said, for whatever reason, Sherry's just not popular anymore. When I went to the liquor store to buy some, I had probably three options out of the entire liquor store, which is okay, considering. Um, but it's always fun to go back in time and try to taste, drinking, eating, whatever, the beverages and foods that people hundreds of years ago enjoyed and see if you enjoy it too. So if you're feeling adventurous this weekend, you want a new drink to try, um, give it a whirl. Thanks guys. See you next time.